morning morning everybody michelle is here on this beautiful morning i think it's a saturday saturday uh, may the 25th 2024 and i know for some people they're celebrating something who knows i mean i know there's a it's a holiday celebration and a lot of people are going to be off work which a lot of people probably prefer to work uh, I'm sure a lot of people will be off on Monday, but I know a lot of people prefer to be working on Monday because for Monday, usually you get time and a half, supposedly when you work off a federal holiday or something like that. So a lot of those things are being taken away from people that really rather work, to be honest with you. So I'm here and I'm up and I got some things to do later. Uh, I, I rested very well. I don't know if it shows in my face, but honey, <laughs> I had a great night's rest. Everything is, is uh, feeling good to me, you know, inside. And, you know, that's where I keep my focus is inside, inside of me so that I can cultivate, contemplate, properly meditate and properly ruminate about my situations and what I need to do. Nothing's changed, per se. I just don't want anyone to be caught up on words. A lot of words. It's always r running around. And people always think they understand words and understand what they're talking about. And that's that's where we're running into a lot of danger. Uh, I just want to say, um, when it relates to our young people, uh, we have um, we failed our young people. But... Failures is opportunity. If you are 43 and, or no, 42 and under, chances are you're not going to make a much progress in your life. And I'll, I'll explain that in a minute, what, what I mean by that. Because there you have to look at things in sevens. So seven times seven is what? What is seven times seven? 42, right? So... I um I said something. I mean, I've been saying a lot of things for a while, and I told you there's a certain strategic path I'm taking in how I disseminate via my videos, and eventually when I meet up with people, meet up with individuals, you know, it'll it'll be a little bit it'll be geared differently, okay? Because you have to consider things as different and similar at the same time. So, as um, wh whatever you call yourself, whether you call yourself a teacher, a messenger, a prophet, a herald, a scientist, an engineer, you know, whatever you call yourself, I want you to, ir ir you know, keep it when you are discovering the things that I'm talking about. I want you to just, just kind of put all that stuff to the side, please. Because if you don't, you're not going to, you're not going to absorb what I'm attempting to share with you. You know, share your birthright with you about what it means to evolve your consciousness, okay? Which is, ought to be, at these days and times, the top of your priority list is to evolve your consciousness. So, storytelling. Let's go on, let's go back into what storytelling is. Storytelling is a social and cultural activity of sharing stories, according to the internet. Sometimes you have to improv. There's the actress. You know, you have to embellish things. And every culture has its own stories or narratives, which are shared as a means of entertainment, educational, cultural pers uh, preservation, or instilling moral values okay uh, look it up understand understand the literal figuratively and metaphoric aspect of storytelling okay let's start there so as a storyteller th that is a creative way of sharing as it says here and telling a story talking about cultures, talking about, you know, the historical facts of, of a culture, the mythologies, the rituals, 
whether they're religious or not. It talks about uh, the complex forms of things, such as our geology, our social status. It's like folk, uh, folk tales, actually, fairy tale stories. And growing up in, in certain cultures, that's, that's how they became uh, a collective of people, is via storytelling. And that's how you teach people as well, is via storytelling. Yes, there's a there's other uh, fundamental basics, like, you know, you need to know your mathematics, you need to know how to speak clearly and effectively the best way you can. You need to understand the, the fundamentals. But as a, as a teacher, as a disseminator, the best teachers, as we know, are the ones that can tell you a story. Okay. They're not, they're not, uh, they're not uh, necessarily boring you with the details and putting you to sleep or causing you to want to cheat on tests, causing you not to want to study. I mean, if I were in school, now, I know, I know, I know, what, you know, based on what I know, it, it, it would be uh, comp the, 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 current si the current system we have now will be completely uh, eliminated and replaced. Okay, and that's literally, figuratively and metaphorically. But storytelling, and I, and I put something out about storytelling, you know, there, it could be uh, leg about about legends, you know, folklore. You know, sometimes you use storytelling as a form of role role playing, R O L E. And I mean, and I'm reading this from the internet. And it's true. Whoever put this out, and the, uh, you know, they they did a very good job of of uh, attempting to uh, disseminate and speak clearly and effectively, and give you as much. Uh, knowledge to understand what we are tasked to do. Folklore. Okay. And a lot of things, if you are, see, what a lot of people do not recognize and understand about teaching someone is that you have to tap in to your consciousness. And I point back here because it, it, it the the pineal pineal gland has a lot to do with it, and I won't go into that right now. But you have to tap into the pineal gland, which is stored behind behind here in this right in here, this area of your of your brain. And once you tap into that, you get the sensory impulses, you know, and then vice versa. You know, the, you know, you get the impulses coming in into you. You get the impulses going out of you, into you, out of you. It's all impulses of energy, okay? But it's not the energy that we recognize and know of, okay? And we'll we won't ever be able to tap into that. Sadly, like I said, probing into someone's mind, brain, is uh, abusive, bar barbaric. You know, and crazy if you find people that are on the outside looking in and paying attention to what's happening on this planet, which people are, human beings are paying attention to this planet from outside our soul system, by the way. But, hey, consider it a storyteller, a storytelling. Consider that. Okay? So, as I am... You know, doing my best to um, to disseminate and, and um, assist our assist humanity as best I can to help. You know, sometimes, like I said, you have to throw out certain. So let me just explain again what is going on, so you'll understand why I do what I do, and why it's so important that other people get on board that are genuinely attempting to help people. Okay understand this but you know and I'll, I'll give you I'll give you some pitfalls in a minute again your task and responsibilities in this human form is to evolve your consciousness okay it's not to evolve your mind it's not to evolve your brain it's to evolve your consciousness 
Okay, your consciousness is energy. It's that 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 type of energy that is untouchable. You know, because we're part piece of the grand scale of it all, and a lot of people call it God, which is erroneous because you are the God actually. It's that creational energy that keeps us, that helps to keep us alive, or that is keeping us alive. Okay, let's stay away from that. So our consciousness is has is pulsating on a certain frequency of energy that's untouchable by any scientist on this planet. Many have tried and failed, and many have left their mark to prove such a thing. I told you about the eye of God. And you don't necessarily have to see me any, look at me anyway, because I know I got that, I got a lot of sunlight in my face. Just like the uh, eye of God, the helix nubia. Okay, that was created by a mad, delusional, hallucinating, human being and we call them scientists now <laughs> so that's those his efforts to tap into that energy that that keeps us alive resulted in that and i'm sure he destroyed himself in the process and who knows where that where that individual is because that this helix has been out for a while so chances are he's already spun out somewhere into a black hole, into another form of energy, for all I know. So anyway, the penile gland has an active uh, responsibility for helping with the evolution of our consciousness, okay? So when I say to you that the mind is nothing more, or the brain, let's just say it, the brain, because the mind, I'm not, you know, the brain is nothing but a chunk of meat that has certain certain responsibilities in our physical, okay? Our brain and our mind are the physical part of everything. Our consciousness is the spark, is that, 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 that energy, that, that impulse of energy that does, that is responsible for everything. All right. A lot of people believe that their mind is doing all the work. No, your your mind is more or less like a, uh, a it's a partnership in helping you to helping part components of you to you know be functioning. Okay, so the mind, accordingly, the mind is what thinks, feels, perceives, imagines, remembers. And wills and blah 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 blah. That is that is, I'm I'm telling you that is not true at all. That's a fallacy. Okay, your consciousness is the one doing all the thinking and and coming up with the ideas. Okay, thinking and thoughts are different. All right, just just hear that and let it go. Okay, your consciousness knows what to do if you activate it. Okay, your mind is not doing that. Your mind is an assistant. The mind is an assistant to the consciousness if you want to, you know, in a simplified form. Your mind is not thinking. Your mind does not come up with ideas. Okay, your consciousness does. Okay, we need to clear that up about what you know about what the mind does with the brain because the mind is that part of that brain let's see let's see how they separate it here it says it's an individual consciousness see that and see the thing is, is the words are like mental gymnastics they you know you you you're, you're attempting to bring two concepts of of uh information together when they really are not in that they're not synonymous they're kind of like a uh, a collectiveness you know if, if in in a, in a way all right 
what else does it say here? So again, it's a fallacy to believe that the mind is is uh, coming up with ideas, and the mind has a function. Okay, the mind is a you know it's a it's a it's it's a it's a function of 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 the physical of who we are, but the mind does not store anything. Did you hear me? The mind does not store anything. Okay, we have storage banks that does that. Each one of us has a storage bank. You know that's and that's another form of energy that's untouchable. Okay. Now, when you don't understand consciousness or the evolution of consciousness, you're going to be all over the place and lost and confused. Okay. So, again, the mind is an assistant to the consciousness. Okay. The mind is like the uh, is similar to a part or component of a of a vehicle, if you want to say that, okay? But because, again, if the mind or the brain were so important, why, why are they left behind when we die? Okay? Because I know people look at things more literal than figuratively, metaphorically, symbolically. And so they figure, okay, this mind... That a lot of a lot of it is just uh, is uh, pieced together throughout the course of time. We piece together what the mind is supposed to do when the mind is not doing that at all. Okay, that's why a lot of people say I'm losing my mind. Uh, what that means is they are confused in their consciousness. The consciousness is the driving force in your life. Okay. We okay, let me start start here. We are a piece of the whole, okay, the creation of it all. We're peace, we are a part of that because that's where we come from. We come from that. We come from the creation, the creational part of why we exist and why we're here. Okay, the mind is not doing that, our brains are not doing that, our hearts are not doing that. So, picture this if you can, listen to this if you choose to, and just feel what I'm attempting to share with you. We are spiritual, which means that we are fine, a fine piece of energy that's untouchable. No scientist on this planet or any other planet can tap can touch the creational spark that created all of us on this planet. Every physical thing that's in our in our vision. Okay? But if you drill it down to an atom, and it goes further than that, it goes further than drilling down to an atom, it, it drills further down to nothing. And I told you, you're nothing. And that's a great thing. So, Anyone that's out there uh, telling you all the, yeah, the, the mind is valuable. It's a part, it assists the consciousness. So yes, you need a mind, so to speak, or, but, but you need to, it needs to be cleared up as to the purpose of a mind. Okay. A mind does not, and, and then it has here, the mind remembers. No, you have memories that. You have a you have a storage bank that remembers, or you have memories. You have a, a, another component to your existence of memories. You know stuff that's you know that 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 helps you to remember your childhood. They help you to remember where your keys are. You know you have mem you know you have that kind of thing. And there's also these type of cognitive abilities that you have as well that. That, that are perceived to be coming out of the mind. But in most cases, it's, uh, it's, it, it is not. Okay? So, so we are, we're barbaric in our attempts 
to drill into someone's brain, you know, that skull, you know, that, that skull to attempt to find consciousness. So, as a storyteller, that's why you have to put out pieces of information to people if you understand the consciousness. And not many people do. I understand the consciousness. That's why I want to help to evolve it. Because we have to if we want to survive. Okay? And that what I mean by survive. To continue on the path of evolution or descend back to uh, animal like monstrous type personalities similar to you know um, the originals on this planet which were and let's be very clear about something I know we praise and honor our ancestors and you know what we ought to give uh, love to our ancestors regardless you know love universal love needs to be extended to our ancestors as well but keep in mind our ancestors were barbaric okay and thus created a lot of turmoil that we are facing the consequences of okay some of our some of our our most of our ancestors were uh sacrificing human beings think about that literally and it may be happening still on this planet in certain regions of this world of this planet uh, our ancestors from all walks the matter who who you are your ans our ancestors were uh barbaric to a point of uh of savage you know as savage and as um you know uh more advanced and the worst creature that you could think of okay uh, there were experiments done, you know, there were back, you know, experiments done on, you know, all, on all of us. That's why we're as we are today. Um, there was always, always constant interference in the development of the human being by our ancestors. And it continues today. And sadly, as a result of that, uh, certain skin tones of people are going to be eliminated or disappear and just like the Neanderthals they will go extinct it's because they cannot handle the complexities of our environment which is man-made by the way they cannot handle the complexities of uh, understanding the development of a human being in the proper sense so instead of instead of involve, evolving, devolving and becoming degenerate to an extreme fatal level. Because of our extremism and our fanatic, you know, we, it's, it's a fatality. It's going to cause a fatality. It's going to cause a break. It's going to cause a collapse. So, I know what I'm doing, and I'm not attempting to compete with anybody. I'm going to make that very clear and effective. If you want to go out, and you ought to. You ought to be out there dis, dis, discerning things and putting it, putting it on, testing it out. And, and, and but, but, but the, more, the best thing you can do, and no one has to know, is change your thinking mode. By eliminating your labels of who you think you are, if you think you, if you if you're specializing in as a scientist, suspend that for a minute. If you're specializing as a as a engine as a as an engineer, business owner, separate all of that and strip yourself of all of that you think you are and think you know about yourself, and you'll see that you are nothing. There's going to be nothing there. Because that's where you come from. You come from nothing and you are nothing. But that is powerful to meditate on. Especially if you can do it out in nature. 
and pay attention to what nature is attempting to signal to you via impulses. Okay, when you get these impulses, you're not going to hear a voice. Okay, because like I said, if you hear a voice, then that means that, that there's something going on with your consciousness. And again, your consciousness is all knowing and all powerful. But if your consciousness unleashed all of that to you now, you wouldn't survive. You have to take it bit by bit by bit by bit. But bit by bit by bit by bit has to be accurate. Okay, and it has to be right. And it has to flow with reason, being logical, rational. You know, and all the other sensing that you have. Abstract. Think abstractly, you know, if that's a word. Objectively, subjectively. And, 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 and make that a part of your thinking mode. Not just literal, even though something is sitting there literally. There's other components to it. It's not just literal. It's it's a it's a combination of, of factors. Okay. So I'm gonna throw that out at you. You know, uh, I feel obligated to do so. Okay. Again, I'm not competing against anyone. You have you have free will to listen to my videos or not. If my videos are too long and too complicated, okay, we'll move on to something that's that's six seconds six seconds long for you if you prefer that, or a minute long for you. Okay, that's fragmented kind of, uh, uh, you know, if it was if it was done properly in those six seconds, in those one minutes, yes, it would be very beneficial. I'm doing the same thing. By the way, I'm 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 putting it out in six seconds in one minute because your consciousness knows. Okay, your consciousness knows what activates it. And that's why you can't fool it. You cannot fool your consciousness. You can play games and then send yourself into a, a psych ward, you know, and unnecessary, unnecessarily send yourself into a psych ward. A lot of people that are in these psych, psychiatric uh, facilities, if they still exist or taking medication, is because they thought they can fool their consciousness. They thought they were better than they were instead of accepting their skills and abilities as part of their development. No, they thought, oh my gosh, I, I'm i sensing something. Okay, and then it turns out to, to be possibly true. That's happened to all of us, by the way. But so many people felt that that made them special and better. And, diff you know, more so they thought it made them better than everybody else are because they were able to pick up with energy. So you're going to get some some uh, interference, which that's what we're doing. We're, we're constantly interfering in the flow because we don't understand it's all coming from our thoughts. The energy of our thoughts, not the mind. Or whatever, you know, I point here because that's where people are probing into your brain. Is with these, with, you know, it's no different than, uh, say that you have a jacket. Okay, I have a, I have a, uh, I have a jacket here. Okay, because this is what we are. We are this. Okay, when I die, you know, it's like I take this off and, and throw it on, you know, toss it aside. And it's, well, you know, it, it'll decay, it'll rotten, and it eventually turns to uh, organic matter that also serves the purpose of the planet. But a lot of people don't, you know, we're, you know, we're just not, we're not, you know. It's about being able to multi, you know, and multitask has a benefit. But again, it's, it's, it's all about how you're structuring yourself. Okay. So again, I'm going to uh, keep pushing this because I think, that, you know, a lot of people are creating a lot of fallacies with honest, thinking they understand the mind. No. It's the, you know, you are, and it says here, the mind is responsible for phenomena like perception, thought, feelings, and actions. That's, that's, that's a fallacy. 
and that's me mental gymnastics. So please do everything you can to cleanse yourself of what you think you know for your own benefit. And again, no one has to know that you're doing this. And ask yourself, okay, what does that really mean? Okay, it's about the evolution of the consciousness, not the evolution of the mind. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and leave that there for now. And I'm just going to do my, my do the best I can to put out the bits and pieces and uh, help you to, to trust yourself. When you trust yourself, that means you're going to trust your consciousness to reveal to you what you need to know in order to evolve it. It has the answers, but it's not going to release it to you until, it, until you have uh, uh, absorbed the proper knowledge to understand how to activate it and how to work with it. Otherwise, you can have consciousness damage, which a lot of people do. Uh, consciousness damage via the form of, of a self-created man-made dementia where their brain has atrophied and it's, uh, it's going to eventually die. And that energy that was supposed to help to uh, de uh, develop it, evolve it, it's going to escape immediately and it's going to go to parts unknown. Chances are, I mean, it's going to take the same course, but you know, you know what the, you know what happens when when something's damaged. What people do with damaged goods? Look at it that way. What happens to damaged goods? Okay. Peace and love, everybody. All over the stars and moon and mountains. It's about the universal love. It's about universal love. Trust me. I'll be back.